Hey guys, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and today let's talk about how to get an entry level job. Now, this is pretty much geared towards software development, and that's where I'm going to spend most of my time and analogies and all that. But the principles within are essentially the same for any industry, with the exception to being like medical and law. But if you're not going into those, this should help you get any entry level job. Now, as you probably know, getting your foot into any industry can be a bit difficult, especially if you need a degree and or some experience in that industry before you can even be considered for a job. And given that that's the case, a lot of us can find ourselves in a loop of, I need this job in order to get the experience, but I need the experience in order to get the job. But fortunately, you probably have more experience than you think you do, so let's talk about how to get out of that loop in general and how to explain our experience in a way that HR is going to approve of. So you need to understand that the hiring process, the interviewing, all of that, it's a game. And you have to figure out how to win the game. But it's not a game that anyone likes to play, and so we don't generally learn the rules. So you need to understand that there are two clear objectives for your employer. The first objective is hire someone to do the work that they need done. And the second objective for them is to do it as cheaply as possible. And then for you, your objectives are, generally speaking, going to be get a job that you don't hate going to on a daily basis, and make enough money to live comfortably. And that battle takes place in the interview and contract negotiation arena. But before you can even get to that arena, you have to beat the first boss, which is the HR department. Now, unfortunately, to beat the HR department, you generally only need one piece of equipment, and that is a degree. So here's the thing. Degrees are practically useless. And what I mean by that is you could go to college and get a degree in underwater basket weaving, which everybody knows is a fake thing, but let's say it was a real degree. And you could get that degree and apply for any job out there, and as long as you have the experience and the skill set to do that work, most companies will look at that and go, huh, what a weird degree. And then they'll just hire you anyways as long as you meet their requirements, but you need a degree. Now, there are a lot of reasons to get a degree, but for the most part, once you have one, companies just want to make sure that you can do the work that they're hiring you to do. Take me, for example. I have a degree in biblical studies and theology, which I love, and I'm glad that I studied that in college, but unless you want to be a televangelist hypocrite and throw Jesus out the window and mislead congregations and just, in general, be a rich, greedy person, which I don't want to be, you're probably not going to be able to pay the bills with a degree in biblical studies and theology. And because of that, I'm grateful that I have skills in software development and general technology because I use that in a day-to-day -day basis to pay my bills. No company has rejected me for a job simply because I didn't have a computer science degree. They look at my experience, they look at what I know, and they say, huh, weird degree. And then we move on with the conversation and get into the interviews. So even though degrees are practically useless, you still need one. And the reason you need one is that HR departments decree it so. It's not great, and it's not how it should be, and we could probably get into why degree inflation in the workplace has become a problem, but ultimately that's a topic for a different video. The fact is that HR departments get so many applications for any particular job posting that they have to figure out how to filter it. And so if they receive an application that is essentially the same, but the only difference being that one candidate has a degree and another candidate doesn't, the candidate that doesn't have a degree is not gonna get forwarded on to the hiring manager. So while that is absolutely ridiculous that you have to have a piece of paper by your name to say that you spent a bunch of money in the American system and got yourself a degree for four years and graduated, it's how it is. It's not how it should be, but it's how it is. So I'd recommend getting your degree as cheaply as possible, right? Get your associates uh, at a local community college, get a bachelor's degree and move on because getting your degree will get you considered for jobs that you wouldn't be able to be considered for without your degree. But your degree isn't enough to get you hired. No, the experience that you have will do that. So while you're getting your degree, you should have some type of personal projects or portfolio that you're working on the entire time. So if you're coding, get a GitHub repository, put your projects up there, finish projects so that you have real experience and real applications that you can show off. If you're doing 3D art, like you see behind me, build your portfolio, make a bunch of different things, have fun with it, and make something that you can show to potential employers 
or clients if you're doing freelance and encourage them to see your skills and hire you and get a job. So while those personal projects are important, you need to know how to put that on your resume. Now, I learned this particular technique when I went through the software bootcamp with Reviture. And after talking with a bunch of software developers, now that I'm in the industry, I found that this is a super common practice for developers who are currently in the industry. And here's what it is. It's lie on your resume. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, Pinkbeard, wait a second, you with the biblical studies and theology degree, you're telling me to lie on my resume. You're insane and a hypocrite, and I'm done with this video. Now I hear you, I do, I, I really do. And in personal relationships and professional ones, I would highly recommend always being honest. And that's how I try to live, and that's how you probably try to live, just be honest. But let me ask you something. What's the best way to represent your skills in anything. I'll guarantee you it's not time. And yet that is what companies are looking for. They want time spent with particular technologies. But time spent does not equal proficiency. Let me give you a couple of examples. When I was a teacher, I taught for four years. And by the end of that, I was able to connect with students and teach my material better than teachers who had been teaching for five, 10, 20 years. Now, you could say that that was because the teachers had become burned out and there was like teacher fatigue and all of that is real and possible. But even though they had been teaching for 20 years did not make them better teachers. And I know that sounds cocky, but as a software developer, I've met software engineers who have been doing it for five to 10 years and yet don't understand basic design principles. So the time spent doing something does not equal the proficiency at that skill. Now, it would be great if we all lived in an RPG where we had real experience levels that we could track and they would be quantified and qualified and, and everything was exact. Or if everything worked like martial arts where you get different belts when you've achieved a different level. But even with those systems, those numbers are flubbed. There are tons of dojos out there just giving out new belts because they need to keep money coming in and people won't keep paying if the people aren't progressing. And if they're not good enough to progress, but you need the paycheck, you're gonna just move them on so you can keep your money. So the truth is there's no real 100% quantifiable way to say how experienced you are at something but there's a pretty good way to estimate your relative ability in any particular given field, especially for an entry-level job. So I learned this method at Reviture, and since then I've basically adopted this and talked to other software developers, and they use the exact same methods or variations on the exact same method. So here it is. If you're trying to get an entry-level position, rate yourself on a scale of one, to three as far as you feel confident. So if you've been programming in Java for your entire college career, you probably have a level three confidence in Java itself. So you take that number three and you multiply that by six months time. Now, congratulations, you have a year and a half of real world experience in Java. At the same time, if you don't feel comfortable with Angular or React, but you have a little bit of experience using that, mark yourself as a one. And now you have six months of experience with that particular technology. And finally, if you have any real world uh, internships or large personal projects that took you long chunks of time to create, you could go ahead and add some of that time onto your already year and a half or six months. So if you were working with Java and then had a six month internship at a software firm, then you have two years of Java experience and you could put two years confidently on your resume. Now, once you've gotten into the industry, you're probably still going to stretch that because that's just the game. It's not great, it's not how it should be, but that's how the game needs to be played because there's not a quantifiable way to say how skilled you are with something. For example, I was talking with a developer who's been in it for 10, 15 years, and he essentially told me, look, if you do six months of work on WPF for desktop applications, Stretch that to a year so that the next job you have, you can say, hey, I've got a year of working with WPF.NET applications and do that for all of your technologies and you will be more likely to get your next job and you'll make more money. Because remember, companies are trying to get you to work for them as cheaply as possible. But if you have more experience on your resume, you're more likely to get what you're actually worth. All right, so that's basically it. 
get a degree, it doesn't really matter what it's in, as long as you have one, you're more likely to get past the HR filter than you would be if you didn't have one, and lie on your resume. Now remember, that's not lying about the skills that you have. If you don't have any experience with a skill, don't put it on your resume. But if you have some experience and you feel confident about your understanding and abilities with that technology, go ahead and stretch that time out. It'll make you more likely to get hired for any particular job if you have longer time with that. And if you're really confident with any particular technology, you probably are exactly as skilled as you think you are. So, thanks for watching. I'm Sir Pinkbeard. If you liked this video, smash that like button. If you have any thoughts that you'd like to respond, let me know in the comments below. And if you just hated this video, double smash that dislike. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.